Good morning, Flag Church. It is great to be together. It's good to be the people of God. Amen? Yeah. It's good to be God's people gathered together. And uh, we are excited. Today we're going to talk about the story of Samson, which kind of reads like a soap opera. So we are really, really excited to get into it. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord. Scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, worship is a decision that we make. It's not just something that we do, but it's a decision that we make. We, we make a decision. God's already offered to us to be present with us, but then we make a decision to enter into his presence, right? So this morning, let's stand together. Let's make a decision to enter into the presence of God and allow God to speak to us as we begin to worship him. Let's open up our hearts and just ask God to do whatever he wants to do in our hearts today. Amen? Let's worship the Lord together. Good morning, everybody. Clap your hands with me this morning. Oh my 
walk out into your freedom, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have called us into that freedom, that we are your children, God. Lord, this morning we surrender everything that's going on in our lives personally and just in the world, God. We surrender at your feet because we can't do this alone. God, we love you and we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your nearness to us. God, I pray this morning as we continue to enter into worship, God, that you will move. That you'll speak to us individually. God, we give you the worship that you deserve, Jesus. Holy. Let's sing this out. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. Ooh. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship you. your presence I'm a lover of your presence I'm a lover of your presence and it's all I want to be sing our passions a passion stirring deep inside you're all that really satisfies we worship you come on let's de declare that out Sing our passions. A passion stirring deep inside. You're all that really satisfies. We worship you.
yourself. I know that I was made for love. I was made for love. Oh, I was made for love. Yeah, one more time. I know that I was made for love. I was made for love. And I was made for loving. Yeah, we are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your presence. And it's all we want to be. We are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your presence. We are lovers of your presence. And it's all song this morning, uh, we're asking Jesus to, to let it rain, like, let his presence rain upon us, let his love rain upon us. We have to be in a position to receive that. We have to be in a position to where we're saying, Jesus, yeah, let it rain, but you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to drink that rain. I'm, I'm ready to receive that rain. I'm not just ready to, nobody likes just standing in the, in the rain and getting hit, Right? But man, it's, it's awesome when you're a kid and you step out in that rain and it's a rainstorm and you're excited to be in that rain, to receive it. There's something magical and special about it when you want to be in it. So the rain this morning, let's be a kid. Let's take it back a little bit. Let's say, Jesus, I'm excited. I'm excited to be in your rain. I'm excited to be in your presence. I'm excited to be filled by your spirit, to be filled with your joy, to be filled with your love. Like that's what we're asking for this morning. We're asking for his reign to come and to fill us up, to fill us up with joy and the hope and the peace that he has, to fill us up with strength that comes from his spirit. So we've got to be ready to receive that this morning. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to encourage you to do this, to take a step a little bit further in a, in a position to say, Jesus, I'm ready to receive your spirit. I'm ready to receive you. You know, when we're kids and we're out in that rain, you know, like we could be spinning, we could be having fun all up in the rain. But a lot of times our, you know, for me, I guess my arms could be lifted or I'm ready to receive it. You know, like if you have a bucket and you're ready to catch the rain, you know, like or your, your hands are out, you're ready to receive. So this morning, I'm just going to have the team go into that let it rain just for 30 seconds, just a couple verses. And would you either be willing to lift your hands up or to extend your hands out like this to say, Jesus, in a position that I'm actually ready to receive your rain, for 30 seconds, I'm going to say, Jesus, come and fill me up. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling worried, if you've got fear, like however you may feel, you say, Jesus, I'm ready to receive your rain, so come and fill me up. 
So as we get into that position, the worship team is going to begin to lead. And I'm just going to encourage you. Say, Jesus, this morning I'm ready for your reign to come. I'm ready for your spirit to come. I'm ready for your spirit to fill me up, to give me joy, to give me hope, to give me faith that there's better coming, that you're not finished, that you're ready for more. Say, Jesus, I'm ready for you. I'm ready to receive you this morning. We receive you this morning, Jesus. We receive uh, your strength. We receive power. We receive authority that comes down on high from your kingdom, Jesus. We thank you for your spirit. Father, we, we, we receive your love, your hope, your peace. Father, there is no fear in this place because of the spirit of God that is within this place. Jesus, I pray that you would fill up these people. Father, fill them up with your strength and your spirit, that there be no fear, God, that they would be remembered, that they would remember, Father, that you are within them, that there is no fear, Jesus, that can stand a chance, Father, because your spirit is there, your spirit is here. Father, continue to reign in this place, continue to let your spirit and your presence move, God. We open up our hearts to receiving the word that you have us, have for us this morning. We come expectant, believing, because you are a powerful God. And we're ready to receive what you have for us this morning. So continue to move in this place, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Hey, Jesus is awesome. Amen. Jesus is awesome. Hey, you may be seated at this time. Welcome to Flag Church. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, you can turn your attention uh, to the screen for a short video. Hey, good morning, Flag Church. We're so glad that you decided to join us today. Hey, if this is your first time joining us, we're so glad that you decided to be with us. We want to welcome everyone that is joining us, whether you're in person or online. Today is going to be an awesome day. And if this does happen to be your first time joining us today, we encourage you to do one of two options. Either text hello to the number below or go to our Flag Church app and fill out the connection card. We ask every single person that is, that is joining us today, whether it be online or in person, to go to our flag app and fill out that connection card. And if you're a guest, there's an option for you uh, on that connection card to just select that you're a guest. That way we have record of your attendance and that we can connect with you. And we're again, so excited that you decided to join us today. There's also an option for you if you have a prayer request um, that you can either text prayer to the number below or also on our flag app. You can select the prayer card and fill out your prayer request there. That way we can pray with you throughout the week. Hey, we encourage you to stay connected with the church and with us throughout the week. 
with connection opportunities on Tuesday and Thursday with Pastor Tom's Thoughts. We have opportunities for your youth students and for your kids to stay connected as well. So we encourage you to do that. Stay connected with us. We love connecting with you. Hey, we've got exciting opportunities coming to you guys, an exciting opportunity for you to give and serve and love Pittsburgh. We have another opportunity to uh, distribute food through partnering with Convoy of Hope. So on August 1st, we're going to have a food distribution here at the church, just loving Pittsburgh. So there are different opportunities for you. Uh, but today we're asking that you would consider giving to this so that we can continue to spread um, the love of Jesus and can continue to reach people uh, through the giving of food. So if you would love to support this, we encourage you to text love pit to the number below and that will connect you with opportunities so that you can give towards that and we encourage you to do this above your tithes and offerings so as we go into our giving portion today we encourage you to do whatever is easiest for you to honor the lord in your giving whether if that be on our flag church app or through the church center app on our website or through text to give we encourage you to do whatever you can to just love the Lord with your giving. We're excited for this morning as we pass it over to Pastor Tom, and we're praying for big and better things for your life. Thanks, Pastor Eli. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's a great set of uh, announcements. It's an excited church that claps for announcements. Um, hey, we are part of the Assemblies of God. We are reaching the world. You know, uh, stateside, we have about three... Uh, million adherents that would say an Assembly of God church is their home. Internationally, we have about 67 million. We're much bigger worldwide. And this morning, it is a joy and an honor to have with us uh, Ronnie and Rhonda Rice, who are missionaries to Portugal. And they're going to come and share for just a, a few minutes with us about their mission. Ronnie, Rhonda, would you come and would you help me to welcome them? Ronnie has pastoral experience missionary experience, and uh, we are delighted to have you here. God bless you. Are we on? Hello. There we go. Thanks, We are Rhonda. so happy to be here. Thank you, Pastor Tom and Lori, and it's a joy to be here inside this place, worshiping with brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are the Rice family. I'm Rhonda. This is my husband, Ronnie, and along with our son, Robert, we are headed to Portugal. And we do have four adult children. Two are married, and we have an awesome little grandson named Jonathan. He'll be two next year, and we're just thankful for the blessings of the Lord in our life. We are headed to Portugal. Portugal is located in Europe, and it's on the west side of Spain. 30 years ago, the Lord called us into the ministry, and we surrendered a call in our first year of Bible college. And then in the second semester of my first year, the Lord called us into missions, amen, to go uh, beyond uh, the borders. And since then, since our graduation, we uh, uh, working in the ministry. We pastored churches in Texas, uh, Missouri, and Kansas. Our last church was in Kansas City, Kansas, and inner city work. And then in 2012, the Lord began to direct our attention toward our mission call. And then 2016, the Lord, uh, we moved from, from the United States to the Canary Islands and worked as missionary associates along with Mark and Kelly Bumgarner in uh, planting an international church in the city of Adeje, Tenerife, which is the largest island on, in the Canary Islands. And we were also help uh, minister in the institute, the Bible Institute, to train pastors. Uh, to plant churches. Europe is a wide open field for missions and uh, we believe that the Lord has called us to this place and we're, now we're going to be going to, to Portugal to do a very similar thing is to plant an international church uh, in amongst the immigrant population. I'd like to share a story with you about a young lady. Her name is Martha and she's from Africa and she recently moved to Europe and to Lisbon for work purposes and she was out at the beginning of the year at the market running errands and she a street ministry team handed her a gospel track she took that home and a couple weeks later she pulled it out she read it and she called the number on the back and she got a hold of missionary Dan West 
of Life International Church. And she just shared with him how back home she had been raised around a Christian community. But being in Europe, she hadn't been around churches, didn't know where one was at or with Christians. And so this was an awesome open door. And uh, Dan invited her. She's now being discipled there at Life International Church. And that is what we're going to be a part of, is reaching the internationals there. Lisbon is home to t over 200,000 foreign nationals or immigrants. And this is going to be our target uh, group as we plant an international church. And understand that the church, as we plant a church, that's not our goal. Our goal is to evangelize people from other countries. What a great opportunity to reach people from other countries. Once they uh, recognize or receive the Lord into their heart, then they need a place to call home, a community. And uh, so it's, it's kind of difficult. Whenever you, if you ever been to a new church or maybe a new place, you walk in, you don't know where you are, that's how an immigrant feels when they moved from their home country to a new country. And so we're going to be reaching these people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask you to pray for, pray for us and partner with us, amen, uh, that we can do this great task. We'd like you to join us on our journey. We are on um, social media, Facebook, as The Rice Family to Portugal, also Instagram, The Rice Family with the number two to Portugal. And recently, while we were quarantined during uh, the COVID-19, when everybody's stuck at home, we opened a YouTube channel and just sharing our ministry and the stories of uh, how God has led us. And we reminded of God's faithfulness in the past and how he's faithful today and he's faithful in the future. He cannot lie. He's a God that does not lie. He keeps his word. And so I encourage you. I want to share, William Carey was a 17th century minister. And the Lord called him to India. He was a humble uh, shoemaker. And his motto in life was, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And William Carey did that in some very trying times and difficult circumstances. And we live in a difficult year of 2020. We as the Rice family are expecting great things from God. He is faithful, and we have stories of his faithfulness. And we are expecting him to do something, but we are attempting to do something for God. And so we're asking you, will you join us in that this year? Thank you so much. God bless you. And we're excited for what God is doing through you and for you. Amen. Like to, I'd like to say something real quick, is that you, this church partnered with us when we went to the Canary Islands. So oh, we appreciate, uh, you ought to give yourself a hand, yeah. because through this church, amen, we were able to go. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. We greatly appreciate you it. You bet, you bet. Rhonda and Ronnie, would you come back up just for a second? I'm sorry. We just want to pray for you as you're headed out and let me get behind you. Would you extend your hand? We'll do this uh, the corona way and just <laughs> extend hands. Uh, but let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for humble servants who are willing to say yes to whatever you call them to do. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you've placed in Ronnie and Rhonda and in Robert. And Lord, we bless them now in the name of Jesus as they head to Portugal. Lord, we pray several things for them today. We pray for peace that passes understanding for them. We pray, God, that you'd bless them. We pray that you'd bless them spiritually, emotionally, relationally. We pray, God, that you would bless them physically and keep them healthy. We pray, God, a hedge of protection around their physical health. We ask, God, that you would bless them financially. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be part of that. We pray that you would uh, meet every financial need, that they could get to the field even more quickly than they think that they possibly could. And we ask, God, that you'd give them a great harvest. Lord, we believe the days are short. And we ask, God, that you would give them a great harvest in these last days for your kingdom's sake. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much. Wow. 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 That is really, really exciting. I'm excited for you. I know all of the logistics uh, for the Rice family. You've got adult kids. You've got a grandchild. Uh, God bless you as you continue through this process, and God bless your family. We appreciate you being here. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. There are so many things that are happening. Before I get into the message this morning, I just want to share a couple, three, four 
several things. Um, one, uh, we mentioned in the announcements, we have the food distributions coming up. We're really excited for that. If you can help us with that, you can contact Pastor Anthony. We've already filled up uh, our registration for that. Uh, we have 150, is that right, Pastor Anthony? Um, you can contact the church, ask for Pastor Anthony. He can help you to get set up with, we need help with uh, packaging the food. We need help on the day of the distribution on August 1st. If you can join with us, we'd, we'd love for that to happen. We've got so many organizations that have partnered with us. Uh, Pastor Anthony just went yesterday, right, and got a whole bunch more uh, chicken wings. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. When you start to do something, there's something that happens when you give, it creates a kingdom vacuum, and things begin to rush into that vacuum. And it's been amazing as we've stepped out and said, yes, we're, we're ready, we're ready to, to do whatever it takes to reach the community. People are in very difficult times right now, many people. And we said, let's just do this. You know, we've had over $70,000 just from Convoy of Hope given to us uh, in food products that we've been able to distribute into the community. Uh, so we've done a couple of food distributions already. We're looking forward to the third one. We appreciate everybody that's partnered with us. Uh, Tyson has partnered with us. Uh, Sam's Club, Ramesh has just been so awesome. And in, in every time he has anything extra, we gave away how many pillows this week? 60... 65 pillows we gave to uh, uh, the organizations that are working with kids that uh, are, are entering into the system. Maybe they're pulled out of their home. Uh, now they're going to have a pillow. Wherever they're headed, they're going to have their own pillow that they can take with them, at least 65 of them. And just things like that are happening all the time. So, okay, I'm um, get, getting too excited about what's going on. August 8th, we have Youth United. They're going to meet here on that Saturday uh, evening. Uh, it's the youth student ministries from across Pittsburgh. And uh, Pastor Eli and the other youth pastors are working to put that together. That's happening. He could use some help, right, Pastor Eli? You can always use some help uh, at, at that event if you want to help with that uh, and uh, get totally worn out on a Saturday evening. That's your opportunity. Um, uh, also, we're doing, uh, on August 14th, we're hosting a first responder lunch. Um, that is, uh, police and firefighters are invited to come through. I think we're running it from 11 to 1. We're just going to feed them in the parking lot. If they can stay and play some uh, cornhole with us, we'll do that. Uh, if they can't, we'll just give them their food and, and send them on their way. But we just want to bless the first responders. You know, they're doing an incredible job in these days and working really, really hard to make sure that needs are met in our community. So we want to bless them. We're also looking forward to our backpack giveaway. We're not sure what day we're going to do that yet, but we want to help kids that are heading back to school. We want to fill up their backpacks with what they need so that they can head back into school and get the education that they need. So God's up to some incredible things. And uh, there are some things that have not been canceled because of the pandemic. And one of those is the work of the Holy Spirit through his people. Amen? Amen. And we're excited for that. All right. Well, take your Bibles, if you have them. If you have your phone, you can uh, turn to uh, uh, your digital Bible. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, we'll project it on the screen. Psalm 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. Let me read that again. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would take your word this morning and that you would do something transformational inside of us. I pray, Lord, that that because of our time together today, the trajectory of our lives would be adjusted uh, toward your kingdom, toward your will and your purpose for our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to share really briefly, you can find this story in Judges chapter 13 through 17. I'd encourage you to, when you get home or in your quiet time this week, to read through the story. It's a story of Samson. Samson was born to Manoah and his wife. Uh, we don't know what Manoah's wife's name is. She's, her name's never mentioned in the scripture, but she has an encounter with the angel of the Lord in, uh, Josh, in Judges chapter 13. 
And the angel tells her that she's going to have this miraculous birth. She's been unable to bear children to this time. The angel of the Lord speaks to her and says, you're going to have a son. You're going to be able to have a child. But I want you to dedicate your son to the Lord. He will be consecrated to the Lord. The angel of the Lord says to her, he'll be consecrated from birth. He'll be a Nazarite, and the word Nazarite actually just means dedicated or consecrated. So the Nazarite vow was a vow that that Samson was supposed to live under. He was he was committed to that purpose. As a as a Nazarite, uh, you were not allowed to eat any fruit of the vine, no grapes, uh, no wine, no grape juice, nothing that came from uh, from the grapevine. You were also not allowed to touch any dead bodies, and the third. Uh, piece of the Nazarite vow was that you could not cut your hair. You could not cut your hair. In the 70s, the Nazarite vow would have been awesome uh, because nobody was cutting their hair back then. But uh, So Samson's story, though, is really, really a dramatic, almost a soap opera kind of a, a story. Uh, his parents, uh, Samson went down the road a little ways to Timnah. He met a girl that he really liked, but in that culture, he couldn't approach her. He had to go back and ask his father to uh, uh, essentially introduce him to this young lady from Timna. Her name is not mentioned either in the scripture. Uh, Samson's father and mother say, no, you don't want to do that. She's a Philistine. Timna was right on the edge of, of the property of the Philistines. They were arch rivals of the nation of, of Israel. And, and uh, so uh, they said, no, you, you, you can't marry a Philistine girl. Aren't there good girls where we live here in Zorah? But uh, Samson stood his ground and wanted and asked his parents if he could please, if they could introduce him to this girl. And so they took off to Timnah. The parent, his parents agreed. They went with him. As they were on their way, there was a lion that leapt out of the, the, the uh, wilderness there and attacked Samson. The Bible says that he tore the jaws of the lion like he would tear a goat. I've never torn a goat's jaws, but that's the way it worked. And, and uh, he killed the lion. He didn't tell his parents what had happened, but he, he killed the lion. They introduced him to the young lady in Timnah. He asked for her hand in marriage. He returned then to Zorah with his parents. On his way back, he discovers the lion that he had killed. And in the carcass of the lion, there was a beehive. And so Samson, uh, contrary to his Nazarite vow, scooped honey out of the lion and ate it and then took it back to his parents. Didn't tell his parents where he had gotten the honey, but he fed his parents the honey also. And then uh, they headed back then to Timna to take his wife. In that process, there was a, an extended feast that was going on. And in the process of the feast, the Philistines brought uh, Samson 30 attendants. He was uh, talking to the attendants and, and he said, he made a deal with them. Uh, and he says, if I tell you a riddle and you get it right, then I owe you 30 uh, pieces of clothing. I'll clothe all of you. But if, if you can't get it right, if you don't know the answer to the riddle, are you, are you following me in this story? It is very much like a soap opera. If you can't get it right, then you owe me 30 uh, pieces of clothing. So they, they had a deal. Well, the Philistines didn't want to uh, pay up, and, and so they wanted the answer to the riddle. So they went to Samson's new wife, and they asked her, what's the answer to the riddle? She implored him for an entire week, and finally Samson uh, succumbed to her and... and uh, gave her the answer to the riddle. The riddle was, out of the strong comes something to, or out of the, let me get it, let me get it. Out of the eater comes something to eat, out of the strong comes something sweet. And the riddle was, obviously the answer to the riddle is this lion that he had killed. But there's no way that they could have known that apart from her revealing this to them. So what happens is she, uh, he tells his wife the answer to the riddle, the Philistines come back and they respond to the riddle with a couple of riddles. They ask the question. Now they know the answer and they say, what's stronger than a lion and what's sweeter than honey? And the, the essence of what, what the answer to their riddle was, was love. What's stronger, what's sweeter than honey? Well, love. What's stronger than a lion? Well, love is. And what they were saying to Samson is, uh, you've asked us a riddle, but the riddle that we're asking you really just kind of focuses attention on the person that you thought loved you really didn't. This is what 
you're looking for. And Samson was infuriated by it and went and killed 30 men. I'm telling you, it's a soap opera. <clears throat> he kills 30 men. He goes back home. Of course, his wife feels rejected. Her, her father-in-law believes that she's rejected. Samson rethinks things, heads back to Timnah to, pick, to retrieve his wife. When he gets there, her father says, Samson's father-in-law says, I thought you hated her, so I gave her, and again, the culture allowed this, I gave her to another man. Now Samson's really furious. And so he, um, I, you can't make this stuff up. He, he catches 30 foxes, ties their tails together. I'm not going to ask for anybody to raise their hands, but there probably is someone in the room as a child who tied cat tails together and hung them over a clothesline. Okay, I'm seeing a couple guys fidget, so I'm, I know it's you. Um, and he then tied a torch to each of those pairs of foxes and turned them loose in the Philistines' property. And so he burned all of their crops. Well, the Philistines asked, how did this happen? They, they were instructed, they were told that this, this is how Samson did it. They were so frightened that they went back and actually... Again, you can't make this stuff up. They burned Samson's wife and her father because they wanted Samson to know that they didn't want him to terrorize them anymore. That seemed to re resolve things for a while, but then you catch Samson just a couple of chapters later and he falls in with, with Delilah, who is also a Philistine. Samson falls in love with Delilah. And she talks to the other Philistines. It's a story repeated. The Philistines say, we really need to know what Samson's strength is because we're still afraid of him. And so Samson toys with her and they go back and forth. And I won't go into all the details, but finally, Samson tells her the secret to my strength is in my long hair. Really, it was in his Nazarite vow. And Delilah betrays Samson. So the whole process is repeated again. And Samson finally, uh, they gouge out his eyes. Uh, Delilah cuts his hair so he's weakened. Philistines gouge out his eyes so now he's blind and essentially imprison him. Over time, Samson's hair grows back. The Philistines forget what the secret to his strength is. And they begin to make sport of Samson and call him to the pagan temple where they were. And as they're making sport of Samson, Samson says, would you please let me just lean up against the pillars of the temple? And when they place him there, he grabs each of the pillars, one in each arm, and destroys the temple, killing himself in the process. Quite a story, huh? Judges chapter 13 through 17. Samson made a lot of mistakes, but there are two essential mistakes that he made. The first mistake was that he didn't take God seriously. We're going to talk about that next week. The second mistake that he made was that he chose the wrong friends. He chose the wrong friends, friends who were not good for him. And so we're in this series about life hacks, small things that it seems like, it seems like they're small, but they have a huge impact on our lives. This week's life hack is really pretty simple and is pretty straightforward, but I want to talk about it this morning because I think so often we forget this. The life hack this morning is choose your friends wisely. Somebody says, well, that's really just a, a, a message or an idea or a life hack for young people. They're making all of these decisions. But how many of you know we all have people who impact us? In fact, Charlie Tremendous Jones is quoted as saying, the per you will be the same person five years in five years, as you are today, except for the people that you meet and the books that you read. It's very true. Our friends have a huge impact on our lives. That's why the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, and let us consider how we may spur one another on, spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, all the more as we see the Lord's return approaching, we should be investing ourselves 
in right relationships, in right relationships, both physically and virtually. And these days, it seems like we've got so many virtual relationships, whether it's on social media or phone calls or, or in person, our friends have a huge impact on our lives. Wherever we are, you may be in a leadership role, your friends have a huge impact on your life. You may be a young person, you may be uh, still in high school, uh, I don't know what your situation is, you may be beginning your adult life and, and making all kinds of decisions, you may be looking for a life partner, uh, there's no one who will influence your life more profoundly than your husband or your wife. Those friendships are really, really important. And they have a huge impact on our lives. So this morning, I want to ask the question and try to answer it. How do I assess the health of my friendships? How do I assess the health of my friendships? I think we do it by asking some key questions. First question is, am I a better person because of this friendship? Am I a better person because of this friendship? Does this person bring out the best in me or something less? Am I a better person because of this friendship? Samson discovered too late that his friendships didn't make him better, that he chose the wrong people. In fact, his friends took advantage of him. So we need to ask this question, are the people that I'm associating with making me a better person? Are they helping me to be a better person or are they doing the opposite? Are they causing me to be less than God has really called me to be? Second question, does this relationship bring me closer to Jesus? Does this relationship bring me closer to Jesus? Again, Samson discovered that his friendships drew him away from God's plan for his life. They pulled him away from his vows. I want to encourage you this morning, if, if your marriage is going through a difficult time, there will be a tremendous tug away from your marriage vows. I want to encourage you, if that's your situation, choose your friends very, very wisely. Because what happens so often is we look for someone who will commiserate with us and they'll encourage us not to honor our wedding vows. We need to choose people who will encourage us to do the things that we've covenanted. And I realize that those situations can become very, very complex, but we don't need to add to the complexity by bringing somebody into our lives who's going to pull us away from the vows that we've made. Maybe you've made a commitment. I, I hope that you have this morning, whether you're here or whether you're online. Maybe you've made a commitment to follow Christ. You've made a commitment to give yourself completely to Him. It's really, really important that we're careful that we don't associate with people who will pull us away from that commitment. Especially if you're a young believer in this place today and you've made a, a fresh commitment to follow the Lord. Maybe, maybe you followed the Lord, you fell away for a time, and now you've made a commitment to, to follow Him with your, with your whole heart. I want to strongly encourage you, associate with people who will encourage you in that relationship. Why? Because our friendships have a huge impact on the trajectory of our lives. We want to choose our friends wisely. A third question that you can ask, and by the way, you can pick up these notes on our church app and uh, follow along if, if you'd like to. I think we even have fill in the blanks for you, which I, I love fill in the blanks. But at any rate, uh, third question is, is my heart purer? Is my heart purer because of this relationship? Is my heart purer because of this relationship? You know, associating with negative or cynical people will have a negative impact on our lives. Can I say that again? Associating with negative or cynical people will have a negative impact on our lives. Uh, in our culture, we have, we have made an art form of sarcasm. And I think we need to be really careful that we don't allow that to slip into the church. God help us to have pure hearts that aren't cynical, that, that aren't cutting. You know, our, our culture has, has, the conversation in our culture has become more cutting and more cruel. I want, to, I want us to be cautious not to allow that to pull us into its vortex. 
that kind of speech has no place in the church of Jesus Christ. Every person is a creation of God. They deserve respect. We need to ask the question, is my heart pure because of this relationship? Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, we aren't projecting it this morning, but it simply says, guard your heart, for from it flow the issues of life. I don't know whether you uh, are watching uh, cable TV or cable news or those kinds of things, listening to the radio, but I've, I, I think that if we could transport ourselves two decades back, if, if we could have two decades back trans ourselves, translated ourselves 20 years forward, we would be absolutely shocked at how people call each other names in our media. And, and abuse, we even have, I'm going to show my bias here, but we even have games on television that demean people, where they get things thrown at them, or they're thrown up in the air, or they're dropped into a pile of whatever, and I'm just really concerned because I, I think that God is calling the church to something much higher than that. And so we need to ask ourselves a question, are, 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 the, are the relationships that I'm engaged in, are, are they causing my heart to grow purer, to become more like Jesus? Is my heart pure? Another question we can ask, are my motives more noble because of this friendship? Are my motives more noble because of this friendship? In, in Samson's life, his relationships took him to, to silly riddles and a senseless loss of life and vandalism. Here's this individual who's consecrated from, from his, not just his mother's womb, from conception, from before conception. The angel of God shows up and says, you're going to have a son. You're not pregnant yet, but you will be. And you're going to have a son. And he is dedicated to the Lord. He's, he's taking a Nazarite vow. In fact, he spoke to uh, Manoah's wife, Samson's mother, and said, I don't want you to break the Nazarite vow. You should not have any fruit of the vine. While you're carrying this child, you are set apart. And you know, we look at that and we say, wow, that, that's, that's really incredible. Do you know that you were set apart? When God created you, you were set apart. The Bible says that God had a plan for you while you were still in your mother's womb. You and I, Old Testament, that's great. Nazarite vow, that's great. That's awesome. Samson was set apart. You and I are set apart so in in, in a, a, a in such a greater way, because the Holy Spirit resides in us, the Bible says, now in Samson's time, they had the tabernacle, later they had the temple, and the Bible said that's where God dwelt, and, and, and it was a, a unique time and a unique place, and, and that's where God dwelt. He dwelt in the Holy of Holies. We'll talk about that more next week. But listen to me. When... When the Holy Spirit came, when, when Jesus came and gave his life that we could enter into relationship with God, lived his life, then spoke to his disciples and said, it's good for you now that I go away. They're going to crucify me, but it's a good thing that I'm going away. Why? Because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I've been with you, but he will live in you. You and I are consecrated, set apart, people of God. And I'm, I'm so concerned that, that we take the calling of God, the, 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 the consecration of God, and we trade it for lesser things. Instead of pursuing God's purpose, Samson was busy killing people and setting fire to fields. He traded God's plan for his life for some kind of a soap opera existence. And I'm so concerned that, and I, I think you know me, those that do know me, you know that I, I enjoy having fun, I enjoy laughing, I, I joke too much probably. Lori oftentimes finds herself following behind me saying, he's only kidding, he's only kidding, because sometimes people don't get my humor. Most of, let's face it, most of the time people don't get my humor. But... Uh, I believe in having a great time, but I don't want to preach next, next week's message, but let me just say it this way. Sometimes 
we take ourselves too seriously, but we don't, don't take God seriously enough. And you and I are set apart. Now, somebody's going to say, well, okay, all this talk about relationships. Didn't Jesus hang out with sinners? Yes, he did. I'm glad you asked the question because it's exactly what Jesus was accused of. He was accused by the religious authorities of his day of hanging out with sinners. In fact, in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 18, we read, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon, that, talking about John the Baptist. And he went off into the wilderness, and he was a little, looked a little crazy. He wore camel's hair. He ate locusts and honey. Somebody said that his mom would tell him, John, no honey until you've eaten all of your locusts. But anyway, they thought he was crazy. And Jesus says, and the son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, here's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. So we have John the Baptist. He's criticized for not associating with people. We have Jesus. He's criticized for associating with people. But the last line of that text of Jesus' words is really, it, it explains so much. He says, okay, these are the accusations, but wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Essentially what he's saying, you'll know whether these relationships are healthy or not by their outcomes. Wisdom is proven right by her deeds. Jesus' connection with people who were troubled resulted in those people growing closer to God. Jesus is saying, yeah, his example, love everybody, especially those who are far from God. However, we have to be careful in those relationships. We, we can't lean on them for advice. We read it in Psalm 1, verse 1, when we started this morning. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Another translation says, Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. So do we reach people who are far from God? Yes. Do we love them? Yes, absolutely. Do we respect them? Yes, absolutely. But we can't lean on them for advice. Why? Because our friendships have a huge impact on the direction of our lives. So the wise man is careful not to follow the lead of someone who's far from God. Proverbs 14 and verse 12 says, there's a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. So who we're listening to, who we're leaning into is extremely important. Second, do, do we hang out with, with people who are far from God? Certainly, we love them, but we don't learn from their wrong ways. Again, Psalm 1, verse 1, we started with it. Blessed is the one who does not... Scripture says, stand in the way that sinners take. The New Living Translation says it this way, blessed are those who don't stand around with sinners. There's kind of this idea of, of taking our idle time with people who are going to draw us away again from the plan that God has for our lives. So we, we don't allow ourselves to begin to think like those who discount God. Does that make sense? So do we love people? Absolutely. We love everybody, but we don't lean into their philosophy of life. We don't hang around uh, and spend idle time with people who are going to distract us from God's plan for our lives. Thirdly, we don't become like them. Again, Psalm 1, verse 1, blessed is the one who does not sit in the company of mockers. Mockers are those who make fun of the things of God. So we see this progression from thinking wrong to acting wrong to even making fun of or mocking those who love righteousness. And the Bible says, if we choose our friends why, uh, unwisely, what the Bible's communicating to us is we'll follow that same pathway. We'll begin thinking wrong, and wrong thinking leads to wrong action, and wrong action begins to harden our hearts, and we begin not just to not do the things of God, but we get, begin to make fun of the things of God. So, oh my word, I need to hurry. Uh, so, John Townsend, says some, I, I told somebody that there's a lot of content today, and they said, well, we're only in one service. We got all day. No, we don't. Uh, John Townsend says we have, we have several types of friends. He lists seven types. I, I just have a few here. But he says, every one of us should have in our lives a coach, someone who has experience that we don't, and we should learn from them. Great example of that is Moses with his father-in-law. Don't have time to go into it. His father-in-law Jethro in Exodus chapter 18. You should read the story. Uh, 
uh, Moses says, hey, father-in-law, look at what I'm doing. And his father-in-law says, yep, what you're doing is not good. Let me rearrange it for you. And Moses was humble enough to follow Jethro's advice. Number two, he says, not just that we need a coach, but we also, uh, John Townsend says, we need a comrade. That is someone who's a peer. They're in the battle with you. Psalm 133 in verse 1 echoes this and says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. We need somebody who's, who's up here, someone who's in the battle with us. So we need a coach. We need someone that we're learning from. We need friends who are in the battle with us. He also says we need someone uh, who he calls a care. We need cares in our lives. That is, we need someone that we can help in our lives. Each of us should be investing in someone else. Listen, part of spiritual maturity, part of growing up in Christ is that we're not just in this for ourselves, we're in it for other people. I love what uh, Timothy says in 2 Timothy, or what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. He's, Paul's writing to Timothy, his protege. So Timothy has Paul, he has him as, as a coach and Timothy's coach says to him, the things which you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, so Paul has spoken to Timothy, entrust these to faithful men. These are Timothy's followers, people that he's caring for. And there's even a fourth generation who will be able to teach others also. There's this passing it on that's absolutely essential in Christianity. John Townsend also says, and, and I'd, I'd love to spend more time, maybe we'll do a series on this at some point, but he says also, we have in our lives oftentimes what he calls contaminants, contaminants. And these are the people that want to harm you. And it seems like Samson had this penchant toward contaminants. We see it in Delilah. We see it in his first wife. That Delilah wanted to reveal Samson's secret so that the Philistines could kill him, could overpower him. And we need to be cautious when contaminants slip into our lives. So we should all seek to have coaches and comrades and cares in our lives, but we also should seek to set boundaries when we have someone who's a contaminant in our lives. And we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to know when those people enter into our lives and, and to set boundaries that we can stay healthy and, and we hold them accountable simply by being healthy and maybe putting some distance. If you've got somebody in your life who's doing damage to you or you've discovered that they don't want the best for you, you know, the, the definition of love, if you want to write this down, the definition of love is simply to desire the best for the other person. We can break it down a hundred different ways. But God's kind of love desires the best for the other person. That's what the scripture calls agape love. That's the kind of love that sent Jesus from heaven to earth. He wanted the best for us. That's what love really is. And sometimes we have people in our lives that don't want the best for us. In fact, they want the worst for us for whatever broken reason it might be. And we need to somehow set boundaries. Again, I'd love to do a whole series on that. So today's life hack is... Choose your friends wisely because they'll shape you. It's true, no matter what our position, whatever our role. There's also a corollary to this life hack. Not only do we choose our friends wisely, but also we need to be the type of friend who positively influences others. So how do we do that? And again, I apologize. This message probably should have been a series, but... But first, just really briefly, how do we become the kind of friend that's going to positively influence other people? First, we're present with others. We live in an age of distraction. The best way to positively influence people, first step, is simply to be present with them. Set aside the distractions. Don't set the cell phone on the table, even if it's face down. Set it someplace else. Set aside the distractions and be present. Second, encourage others. I've had some people just this week speak words of encouragement into my life. And it's like, it's like, sorry for the analogy, it's like taking off your face mask and breathing real air. Encouragement is so powerful. And you know, no matter how much you encourage, there's always more. Maybe you've got somebody in your life and you, th you think, boy, they have just got it together so much. They don't need encouragement. They know they've got it together. 
Have you ever had a time in your life where you've said, oh man, that was too much, that was, that was way too encouraging for me. I have had it up to here with encouragement. <laughs> Doesn't happen, and nobody on the planet has ever said that. So we're present for people. We encourage people. Third, and this can be tough, but, but in our friendships, we give reality. We don't sugarcoat things. We, we speak the truth in love. Pro Proverbs 27 and verse 6 says, Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. And fourth, and again, we need to unpack these sometime. Be there for the next steps. And we can't do this with everybody. But if we have those significant friendships in our lives, we can't just be there to throw out an encouragement here or there. We can't just be here to bring reality. We, we have to commit to be there for the next steps. Proverbs 17 and verse 17 says, a friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in a time of need. <laughs> so this morning, maybe you're in a situation where you really need a friend. Um, crazy thing about friendship is that it's built on trust, and you can't force anybody to be your friend. Just It doesn't work that way. But if you are in need of a friend, I would encourage you to begin to practice being the friend that you would like to have. And my experience is that when we get really good at that, uh, we'll have reciprocal friendships. People will begin to pour into our lives. Would you stand with me? so much more that we could say about Samson's life <laughs> and about friendship. And I know this is, again, is a bit of a simple concept, but, but I believe it's so, so powerful that many of us are running on emotional empty. Sometimes spiritually, we're running on empty because we've not allowed space and time for friendships that we can breathe life into and that breathe life into us. I believe it's God's will and God's plan for every one of us. So I'm going to ask you to bow with me in prayer if you would. Heavenly Father, I know that there are people in this room who are in need of the kinds of relationships that, that we've talked about this morning. And Lord, I pray right now that you would help us, help us to be the kind of friends that we need. And Lord, I pray for the establishment of godly friendships. Lord, I pray for people in the room today who perhaps are surrounded by people at work, maybe surrounded by people in their family who really don't understand, maybe don't have the capacity to, to provide this kind of friendship. Lord, we know that that can be really life-draining rather than life-giving. and So I pray, Lord, that you would help us to discover, uh, to develop friendships that will bring glory and honor to you. And I pray especially for those who are being dragged down by relationships, that God, you would, you would breathe life into their lives through others who love you. With heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe you came today and your great need is friendship with God. Maybe you, if something were to happen to you today, you don't know where you'd spend eternity. But you want that kind of a relationship, that kind of a relationship with God where you're certain about your eternal destiny and you know that you have a friend. As the book of Proverbs says, you have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In John chapter 15 and verse 13, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life 
for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. So if you're in need of that relationship, with heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe you're here present with us in person, maybe you're watching online. If that's your situation, I'm going to ask you just, if you're here, just to slip up your hand. If you're there watching online, just nod your head. Just, just acknowledge that's, that's what I need. If that's your situation, I'm going to pray. I'm going to lead us in prayer. I'm going to ask those who are here to, to pray this with me in support of those that may be praying it for the first time. But would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I turn away from my sin and I turn toward you. I give you all of my life, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to be. I'm yours. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for changing me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, whether you're here or watching online, if you would just text uh, to the number that's at the bottom of your screen, uh, the word believe, uh, we would love to get in touch with you and just help you in your new walk with Christ. It's 620-254-0303. Just text us the word believe, and we've got some resources that we'd like to get into your hands. God bless you. Let's worship the Lord before we get away from this place. Let's allow God to to pour that seed into our hearts and lives. Let's acknowledge him. Amen.
Moses here declaring, He who came in power, He will come again. He who heals the sick, won't He move again? He who raised the dead, won't He raise again? And I will sing, and I will sing. One more time, He who came. Jesus, that we get to, to worship you freely, uh, to love you. Jesus, you choose to love us individually, God, that you pursue us, that you lead us, that you guide us, that you instruct us, Lord. And Lord, that you're gracious to us when we may not follow your leading. We thank you, Jesus, uh, for the opportunity that it is to be in relationship with you. I pray a blessing upon every single person in this place, Jesus, that they would just be filled up with hope, joy, peace, God, that they would walk out the message that we've heard today, Lord, that we would be the friends that we want to have. Jesus, that we would encourage, that we would be present, that we would love people, and that we would show people your love. We bless you. We praise you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Well, guys, we love you so much. We're so glad that you were here today, uh, praying blessings upon you, and uh, we are excited uh, for the future. And we're excited to see you guys next week. So praying that you have a, a blessed day. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. We're so excited that you guys decided to join us today. Praying that Jesus has done amazing things in your life. Hey, we would love to have you in person next week if it works out. If not, we have loved having you a part of our online church as you are an extension of Flag Church here in our community. We love you guys so much. We're praying for you, um, praying that this will be a wonderful week. And uh, we cannot wait to be with you guys again next week and, and continue to stay tuned in with us online through social media and uh, we're excited for the future that God has for Flag Church and for you.